Welcome to Short Circuit of Brewers. Our channel is all about electric brewing. We do electric brew days, product reviews, and how-to videos just like this one. In this video, we're going to be discussing uh, PIDs more in depth, how to set them up, how to auto-tune them, and how they work in a brewing system on a brew day. And that's coming up right after this. In this video series, we've discussed a lot of different types of brewing, and most common thread in all of these videos that we've done has been a PID. Now, we have discussed in the series the DSPR120 and the DSPR300. Those are great for doing brew in a bag or for doing a rim system. I think they work very well. In a Herm system, they would work as well, but I do like the SYL2352 from Opera Instruments for a Herm system. It does give you a little bit more detailed ability to adjust for temperature overshoots, adjusting parameters. It's a little bit more in depth as far as the setup goes than the DSPR120 or the DSPR300, but it, it is a more detailed device that can give you a little bit more control over your brew day. There are some advantages to the DSPR120 and the 300. The advantages of those controllers, and I'm, I don't even know if I'm going to call them a PID really because I did some more research on them. Uh, they are more of a just a temperature controller. They do use a little bit of fuzzy logic to determine the variables of your system, but I don't think that they're a true PID in the fact that you can adjust a lot of parameters and that sort of thing. They almost don't even call them a PID in their manual that they give you. So the beauty of those are that there's really not, you don't have to auto tune them. They're set up to work right out of the box, which is kind of nice. I mean, you don't have to worry about any you know parameters or doing any math or anything like that. The SYL2352, however, it does allow you to adjust a lot of different parameters and hook up different sensors to it. There's multiple uses for that particular PID other than brewing. I happen to use them in my system. I have three of them in my Herms control panel, and I do like them. Um, I, I might consider changing the boil kettle to a DSPR120 just because of the fact I like the dial that you can adjust the boil with. So that's a nice feature, but what we're going to do is we're going to go over how to set up the SYL2352 and show you what the different parameters are. There's some things you don't even have to mess with, but there are some things that you want to change. Um, one of those is the probe. And incidentally, the DSPR120 and the 300 don't use any probe, but the RTD, I think it's the PT100. And that is the sensor that most people use in their breweries uh, for you, you know, regulating or reading temperature of the mash or the, the boil kettle or whatever. So let's jump in and take a look at the PID. All right, so I've got my panel turned on and looks like I've got a little bit of variation between the temperatures in the brew room here because uh, HLT and the mash temp are pretty close to the same, but the boil temperature is showing a little bit different. It's uh, nice and cool in the basement. Oh, now I've got 65, 66, 67. <laughs> pretty funny. So uh, the way that the PID works is that it has different settings. And the way that you get into the settings is there's a set button here, there's a automatic manual button here, and then there's up and down buttons here. So the way that you get into the setup of the PID is you press and hold the setup button until the first menu comes up. Now that first menu, that is a process high alarm. So that allows you to set a upper limit alarm. This is the alarm two is for a low limit or low alarm. The next one is a deviation high alarm. And then the next one is a deviation low alarm. So you can have certain deviation points for, you know, if you have your high alarm set for X amount of degrees, you can set a deviation on that to set another alarm. The hysteresis band, auto tuning, that is definitely one that we want to take a look at. Integral time, I am not 100% sure what that's for. Proportional constant. Derivative time, these all have to do with the algorithm. Cycle time, that also has to do with the derivative. SN, that is one that we want to take a look at because that is the input type. It allows you to dictate what type of input you have on the device. The decimal point position, that's kind of nice. It has four different uh, readouts or four digit readouts. So you can actually move the decimal so that it shows where the decimal point is if you want to look at tenths of a degree. The display low limit, display high limit, 
input offset, that is uh, something we'll take a look at because you can actually adjust for temperature variations on the probe input itself. The output mode, output low limit, output high limit, alarm output definition, system function selection that allows you to change the uh, heating or cooling or change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. There's a communication address. That's not even, they even say ignore that setting in their manual. Uh, BOD, communication BOD rate, same thing they say, ignore that. This is the PV input filter. Then there's an A and an M, which is automatic manual status, and that's uh, something we'll take a look at. And then there is the lock, which is uh, allows you to lock all the parameters so that they can't be accidentally changed. And then there is the field parameter definition, and that's you can define, you can have user define parameters. So that's pretty much all of the settings in the device itself. There's up to eight different parameters you can set on that. And then we're back to normal. All right, so the first setting that we want to take a look at is our input. So the, the RTD probe, the PT100, that actually is classified in their manual as uh, 21 is how they select that. So you can use the value arrows to go up and down. I think it starts at one whenever the unit is brand new. And then that will allow you to set the probe type at 21. And that is what they recommend for the RTD probe, the PT100. Okay, the next setting we'll take a look at is the automatic manual function. And what that allows you to do, that allows you to adjust the PID output to control either to a temperature or a percentage of output. So, okay, so there's the automatic and manual mode. And by default, it's set to two, which is manual suppressing, but you wanna set it to one and that will allow you to switch between either automatic or manual mode. And that will allow you to adjust the, so that the PID will control it to a temperature or will control it to a percentage so that it's good for your boil kettle whenever you have it set to a percentage you can control how rigorous your boil is that way in the automatic mode it does hold to a temperature which is what we'll be using for the HLT and that is the setting for that all right so I've got my HLT filled up with water and I want to start the auto tune process I'm going to show you guys how that works what it does is basically it takes the heating element turns it on turns it off and then it gauges how much of a variation there is uh, between the time that it's on time that it's off and then it inputs that into its own fuzzy logic and makes a determination of how long the element should be on and how long it should be off to maintain a certain temperature so let's get it into the auto tune mode and that is right there so we'll put it in two and that actually will let the auto tune start within 10 seconds so we'll let it get back to the main menu. If you just leave the thing alone for a minute, it'll jump back to the main menu. And then the two should start the auto-tune. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the pump on, turn the element on, and we should see it start to auto-tune. And you'll see what happens whenever it starts to do that. So it will begin to auto-tune. I have the temperature set to 150. So it's going to use that as kind of a set point to try to target for. So we'll see what it does. As you can see, it's starting to pulse the element on and see how it affects the temperature and as it goes through its process you'll see it'll leave the element on for longer to try to heat the liquid and see what results it has from that so we'll let it run i must speed up this part of the video to about double speed so you guys can see i won't be talking over it but i'm going to speed it up a little bit so you guys can see what happens in the auto tune All right, so as you can see, the auto tuning is actually completed and you'll see that the light comes on every time and it corresponds with this output light on the PID. After the PID auto tune, you can see that the PID knows how much to apply to maintain that temperature of 150 degrees. So 
that is how the auto tuning is done and I will be back here in just a few minutes with a few tips and some other thoughts. All right, so that's kind of an overview of the features and the options and auto tuning of the SYL 2352. Hopefully that helps you. I did actually learn a couple things myself while doing this video for you guys. I did learn that the PIDs are so sensitive that I had some blankets and everything over there in the area that I was recording in to try to keep from having real echoey sound. And what I found was I had the HLT half covered with a blanket and it changed the thermal properties of the vessel enough that whenever I first turned the PID on and everything, it overshot the temperature by two degrees because just being half covered with that blanket, it changed the properties of the vessel enough that the, the previous uh, auto-tune settings did not work as well. So that's one of those things that uh, I didn't realize, but now I know. So uh, one, a couple other tips that I wanted to let you guys know about. Whenever you do your auto-tuning, you want to make sure you do it. You saw me do it at 150. Kind of make sure you do it at a temperature close to what you're going to be mashing at. I think 150 is pretty good because you're going to be 148, 152, 3, 4, whatever. It's right in the range of where you should probably be mashing at. So do that. And then the other thing is I would recommend, especially like with a rim system or a brew in a bag system, that you try to set everything up like you would when you're brewing. So in a brew in a bag system or in a rim system, you're not going to have all your valves wide open on your pumps. So when you go to do your auto tune, try to mimic what you think it's going to be. And, you know, initially your first wet test, I probably wouldn't even bother with auto tuning. What I would probably do is maybe do an auto tune whenever you first set up your system. And then your first brew day, I would say to go ahead and auto tune it again when you have all your grains in there and everything, because that big mass does affect the thermal properties of your mash ton, etc. So make sure that whenever you do that, you might want to do two auto tunes. It can take a little while depending on how much the temperature fluctuates. I know this, I think it took about 20, 25 minutes to do it this time, but that was because I had a blanket over it and it was, it wouldn't, the, the temperature wouldn't rise and fall very quickly. So the PID kept making adjustments and putting little increments and trying to see what it would do. So it took a longer than normal. Normally it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to do it. So, but hope that helps you guys. Uh, do have another part of the series coming up and it's going to be on a Herm system and I'm going to use my system as the model for that. Um, Doug is doing the diagram for me and as soon as I get everything from him and get started on that I will be publishing that video out there and then we're going to look at doing maybe some more in-depth stuff, uh, some more wiring. I know people have been asking for complete wiring. Still trying to work all that out but hopefully I'll be able to bring that content to you guys as well. So this has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up. If you're you know new to the channel, consider subscribing. We really appreciate it. We'll see you.